Hello all, in the last tutorial we have completed the hardware design part of our system which uses our image processing IP. So in today's tutorial uh, we will be discussing the software part of the system in order to verify it on hardware. So we will be reusing many concepts which we have covered in the previous tutorial. We will be reusing the DMA controller, we will be using the intro controller, we may be using the UART for sending and receiving data. So uh, I'll be reusing a lot of the code that we discussed before. Uh, before that, I would like to mention one thing. So in our previous tutorial, we sent an image to our board using the UART interface and you have seen like that's a very slow process. Uh, so today I will try to show another technique where you can store large data directly in the external DDR without sending it through any of the interface. So provided you want to use some data which is fixed, like uh, for example, an image for testing our system. I just want to get an image in my system memory. One way to do is uh, make it part of your software code itself. So what I mean is if you have an image, it is simply a big array of numbers, right? So instead of sending the image from external world, you can create a static array of that big numbers and make it part of your software source code itself. So that's what I am trying to do first. So we have the image of Lena. So I know uh, it contains only numbers, FITAL by FITAL numbers. What I'll do is I will take those numbers and store it as a character array. Then later that array can be used in my C program uh, to send the image to my peripheral. Now this part you can uh, do using any software application. Um, from hex editor, maybe you can simply copy paste or you can use a Python script or whatever, but I'm going to use Verilog itself. Uh, to do it. So as I mentioned before, Verilog is also uh, a programming language. It's also Turing complete. It can do anything that your C program can do. Okay. So since it can do file handling also, uh, I can use uh, Verilog for reading the image data and print it into a text file. So I'm going back and opening my old project, which we use for generating our IP and I'm going to slightly modify my test bench. Okay. okay, let's go ahead and open the test bench. So what I'm going to do here is uh, whenever I read data from my image, see we use the fscanf to read data from that image file, I will write the same information into another text file. Then I'll be using that text file as part of my C code. Okay, so let me open one more file. Let's call it file2 and we'll say file2 equal to open, let's call it image data.h because we'll be use it as a header file there and simply w because it's not a binary file. This is a text file. Now this is the header part we are reading. We are not interested in header part. We are interested in the image part. Okay, here we are reading the first four lines. So when I am reading it, I will write it also. $f write file 2. We will store it in decimal format. Okay, percentage 0d image data. And since it is like a array I want in C code, let's put a comma also after each number. Now same information I will store here also. Here we are sending the remaining image byte by byte. So at the same time, let me store it in this file also, image data. Okay, so after this, we are sending two dummy lines also, as I mentioned before for proper uh, convolution to happen. We need to dummy lines also. So that information also I will uh, do in software also because in 
in in hardware real implementation also you want to send those two dummy lines but uh, in that case i am just storing zero in the array because uh, here image data is zero so you can directly put zero there that is the first line and uh, this is the second line and after that let's close this file also f close file 2 okay so now let me go ahead and simulate my code so while i run simulation it will be correcting it okay so there is some error in my code now uh, vivado when you have error in simulation it might not directly come here that is logged in to separate file depending upon whether the error came during compilation or error came during something called during elaboration so this time we have error in elaboration so we need to go and check this file elaborate.log that file will be uh, open file in your current project okay inside that there will be a sim folder inside that sim1 behavior xsim inside that folder you will see elaborate.log you will also see compile.log but we don't have error in compilation we have error in so called the elaboration like some linking okay so line 60 okay undefined system function open okay yes corrected so let's rerun okay so let's run the simulation simulation is over now if you go to the folder this sim folder you will be able to see this file image data dot h which got created and if you open that file you can see the image data in text format okay this is that that entire image information every pixel so I'm going to use this file in my C code. So what I will do is I will just make it as a array of characters. So let's say like char image data. And if I put a curly bracket here and at the end after removing this comma, this became array of, of characters. Okay. Now if I include this file, in my C code, this array becomes part of my C program itself. So the image is part of my program itself. I don't have to send it from the external world. So this technique you can use in many places where you want to have some constant data in your program and you don't want to send it through external interfaces. Okay, good enough. So that's about uh, this part. Now let's go back to our old project okay because we changed some files here he's saying ip has changed but don't worry i have already generated the bitstream so let's export our hardware and uh, launch sdk okay here is our sdk let's go ahead and start a new application project Let's call it image IP test and empty application. So the first thing I'm going to do is to bring that uh, header file, that constant array of image that we just generated to my project here. So we go to source and choose import you can copy paste it but uh, this is a better way so file system and just browse and find it out okay this pc hmm. 
mesh data dot h okay so that came into our project okay okay now let's start as c source source file let's call this also a mesh test image ip test dot c so as i mentioned before i'm going to reuse a lot of my code so i have already kept my previous codes here so first thing let's add the dma because we have the dma controller in our system which is used for sending as well as receiving data from the ip core but the difference is last time our dma was on complete polling mode but this time we will be changing it to interface mode also okay so this part we can reuse the header file and all and this halted function this was used for polling to check whether controller is halted or not let's see whether you want it or not okay so let's basically copy paste everything and remove the things which we don't need okay so these arrays we don't need this time status config okay lookup config we need initialization checks halted this we don't need and flashing and all we don't need this time cache we are using the acp port and also we are not sending data through uart it is part of your program now and this is where you are sending and receiving data okay so this part needs to wait okay let's do still uh, till dma initialization and remaining part we will see okay so this is where the polling was happening and we might not need the polling this is where finally we are printing the result after dma okay so this part can wait let's come back here and see whether we need to do something more here we need to do one more thing because this time we are going to use interrupt and by default interrupts are not enabled in the dma controller so usually any ip core which supports interrupt there will be some register called interrupt control register and you need to configure that register or you need to write some value to that register in order to enable the interrupt otherwise uh, the interrupt won't be coming it will be by default in polling mode so if you go to the xxi dma header file you will find a function let's check interrupt yeah this function xxdma interrupt enable so this is the function used for enabling the interrupt so we need to enable interrupt it's it's uh, declared as an inline function that's why it's looking like this so we need to enable the interrupt now remember in the block design let's close this project in the block design I mentioned we are interested only in one interrupt, the S to MM interrupt. That means uh, device to memory interrupt. Okay, we are not interested in memory to device interrupt because instead of that interrupt, I am directly using the interrupt from my IP core. So let's bring this function here to enable interrupt. We need to pass the instance pointer to the DMA controller. Okay. We need to send a mask, okay? So that mask basically says which interrupts are enabled, which interrupts are disabled. Again, you can go and check the data sheet to find out what values should be stored uh, in, the, in the interrupt register to enable particular interrupts. Or you can go to this header file, xxcdma underscore bd dot h, where they are declaring Oh, no, this header file, I guess. This one, xxadma hardware. H, where they are declaring all these uh, masks as constant. So we need to enable something called the input output interrupt. Okay. So here you can see, okay, halted mask. Okay. These are the interrupt mask. So we need to enable the mask for input output. 
Okay, so the interrupt can happen if there is uh, input output completion. That means the DMA controller finished some operation. Okay, so there is something called a delay interrupt and there is another interrupt in case some error happens. So we are interested in this one, input output completion interrupt. So we give that as the mask and di direction. Okay, we have seen there are two kinds of direction. Uh, device to DMA, DMA to device. So we are interested in which one? Device to DMA. Okay, so that's it. So we configure the interrupt also. So we enable the interrupts. Okay, so at this point, don't worry about the errors. Fine, so DMA part we have done. Next one, we will do the interrupt controller part. So again, that we did in the previous tutorial. So we can take these two. And we have the interrupt instance and the interrupt service routine. Okay, we'll come back to that. Okay, so this is the interrupt controller, declaration of ISR. Now we don't need these things. Okay, this is the config that we need. Let's write some comments here. This is DMA controller configuration. This is interrupt controller configuration okay so this we need this we need or this we need after that this is where we set the priority for particular intro Okay, so this time we have two interrupts, so you need to do this for both interrupts. Fine, so take it from that, and this is set priority, and this is the IRQ number. Okay, so this time we have two interrupts, so if you go to X parameters, search interrupt, you will see two interrupts, see, 61 and 62, with uh, two different IRQ numbers. So you need to configure both. So first, let's configure the interrupt for our image processing IP. Okay, so we need to say here, this one. Okay, so priority, okay, let's keep A0. This is edge triggered interrupt, so we keep edge triggered interrupt. And this one, connect one particular IRQ with a particular interrupt service routine. So we have here something called merge ISR. Instead of that, let's try to call it uh, image processing ISR. Okay, so that ISR we will write. What should happen when the, sorry, when the processor gets an interrupt from our image processing IP, what should happen? We need to write inside this ISR. The third one is a pointer to, to whichever peripheral is giving this interrupt. So let's keep it zero itself for the time being. Maybe later you can change it. Okay, so that's it. Interrupt enabled. So here also we need to enable that particular interrupt. So again, this one. Okay, so first interrupt we are done. And there is one more interrupt. So copy paste it and change the ISR to this one. Okay, this one, this one, 
and the priority we need to give two different priorities so let's give it slightly lesser priority this this one let's call dma okay receive a yes sir that is the interrupt service routine when we get an interrupt from the dma controller okay so we will write that one also but let's just declare it static with the declaration of isr will be always static void as return type this one and you can pass one parameter we will see it later so for the time being <coughs> this parameter keep it zero the pointer to the to the structure representing the hardware let's keep that also zero and here let's enable this interrupt also okay so that part is also done now this part is like a fixed one you always need it which connects the interrupt service root interrupt controller with the operating system okay so that's also done okay so this part maybe yeah we can start now okay so now we are starting to actually send data okay so first let's configure the receive part device to dma how much data we are expecting we are expecting the entire image data so 512 by 512 remember this is the receive part so this is configuring how much data you are expecting from your ip to the memory okay that we can continuously stream so we just configure it 512 by 512 where you want to store that data okay so let's overwrite the data in the memory so we already have this array image data and whenever the processed image data comes back let's overwrite it so it's enough to just write image data here okay looks fine that's the receive part now transmitting part again remember similar to our test bench you have four line buffers so you cannot stream the entire image to your ip in one shot you can stream only four lines at a time and once he gives an interrupt saying like he has finished processing one line buffer you can send the next line fine okay so here again image data because that is the starting address i am starting to send from image data now how much data you want to send initially four times five two. if you like you can declare all these as constants at the beginning okay fine a undeclared okay so let's save it okay so that error goes away here somewhere is there image data yeah we need to include that header file hash include image data dot h then only it's part of our program there are some errors here let's see image proc isr okay okay we have just declared them but we haven't defined them we will define them so let them be there here integer from pointer without cast okay that's fine actually if you are a perfectionist you can write u32 because he is expecting a 32-bit number which is an address actually okay fine so this one was basically the polling so we don't need this anymore because we are interrupt based but remember if you just write your code this much your processor will do this much and it will exit from the main code so you should not make the processor exit from the code you need to keep the processor in some kind of loop until the entire operation is over so when we will finish our operation we'll finish our operation when the entire image is processed okay so to that part we will come back how to make sure 
whether the entire image processing is finished or not. For doing that, uh, we will have to complete our interrupt service routines first. Okay, so let's go ahead and write our interrupt service routines. So first one is this one. <coughs> this ISR, image process ISR. So remember, this ISR will be automatically called when our IP gives an interrupt, basically saying he has finished uh, finished processing one line buffer, so I can send a new line buffer. Okay, so how do we send a new line buffer? Okay, just using this DMA transfer, we can send a new line buffer. But what should be the starting address of the new line buffer? The starting address of the new line buffer is from the next address, from the last line buffer. Okay, so if you just write it like that, always he will start sending from the first pixel of the image. So you don't want to do that. Okay, so instead of that, what we can do is, okay, so we can say ampersand i times 512, something like that. And uh, we will keep on incrementing the i, i plus plus, okay? So each time when we call the ISR, i will be incrementing. So first he sends first line buffer, next time i will be two, so next line buffer, so on and so forth. And not four times vital, we want to send only one line buffer, so just vital. Now we need to declare i, and uh, what should be the initial value of i? Because we have already sent four line buffers here, okay? So we need to initialize i with four because I want to start sending from fourth, oh sorry, fifth line buffer, okay? So i should be four. Okay, now the problem with this code is, as you know, this is a function, this is a local variable. Each time when the ISR is called, I will be initialized to four but you don't want that to happen each time uh, I shouldn't be initialized it should be initialized only once so that next time when the function is called I will have the value 5 and after that 6 and so forth so if you are familiar with C you may know the static variable if you declare it as static variable it is initialized only once and uh, after that it is not initialized so this incremented value of 5 the, the function will remember when you call it next time again. Okay, so now let's try to do it. So initially i equal to 4 and uh, we need to send the next data. But whether you always want to send it, you want to send it only until you finish processing, right? So how many lines you want to send? The 512 lines of the image and the two dummy lines at the end. So we'll say like if i is less than 514, you will do it. Oh, this is not really look. Okay, 514. You want to do it after that you don't want to do it because this condition shows that you have finished sending the entire image okay so after this we need to add some standard things in ISR so again remember when you get an intro first thing you need to do is disable that intro do whatever you want to do and after that re-enable the intro okay so that code we already have in our previous project okay this one this is the function to disable it and uh, we need to save which intro so this is our old one now it is this one image processing and before you return from the function, you re-enable the interrupt. Okay, so this one looks fine. But there is one more catch. Okay, suppose you got an interrupt 
you came here and you are trying to send the next line buffer but it is possible that the dma controller is still sending some previous image data while you got the interrupt from the ip so if you blindly restart sending the next data what happens is he may stop the previous data transmission and restart this new data transmission which will cause some data loss okay, let me clarify once again so at the beginning you are sending four line buffers remember four line buffers okay but as soon as he finishes sending three line buffers our ip will start uh, the filtering operation and it is possible that our ip will finish that convolution operation before the fourth line reaches our ip so our dma controller he is still sending the fourth one but our IP, he finished the first round of convolution and he gave us interrupt. And as soon as we got interrupt, we are sending the fifth line here. But the problem is the fourth line was not completely sent. This may cause issue. Okay. So to avoid it, what you should do is you need to make sure that the DMA controller is idle. He has finished sending the previous data before transferring this new data okay so for that we are actually going to use some kind of polling so last time we used this one check halted which is basically checking whether the halt bit in the uh, in the dma controller is uh, one or not so if you remember our axi dma ip we were uh, checking the status register to see whether he's idle or not this one not this one that is control register this one so we were checking this bit to check whether he is halted if he is halted that means he is done you will transfer the next byte but uh, let me say one thing this is not in the document but from my personal experience sometimes you will see it is uh, saying he is halted sometimes he will say he is idle okay so whenever you are doing dynamic memory allocation and if the dma controller is trying to transfer from dynamically allocated area from the DDR, he is making the halted bit high if he is sending from the static part instead of halted he is saying uh, he is idle Okay, I really don't know in the documentation there is no clear description of that why it is that uh, ideal case always the ideal bit should be one but in our previous case when we did uh, dynamic memory allocation this bit was not becoming one instead this bit was becoming one and also if the DMA is trying controller is trying to read from from invalid memory location which is not statically allocated in that case also the halted bit is coming okay so instead of check halted i'm just changing it and calling it check idle to see whether dma controller is idle and uh, here everything else remains same instead of halted mask that is also coming from here i'll be checking whether he's idle okay again remember if you are doing dynamic memory allocation check for halted if you are using static allocation because now our image is a statically allocated id check for ideal not halted okay so i will just check uh, so in status so we'll say okay status equal to check ideal base address okay we have it from our previous code this one address for because this is memory to device we are checking check idle xdma base address uh, plus four now if status equal to equal to zero or we need to say while status equal to equal to zero we keep on reading it until it becomes one right 
status uh, not equal to 1 or if status equal to equal to 0 you keep on reading until it becomes 1 basically indicating he is idle only when he is idle you will transmit the next line okay so this completes the ISR for the for the image processing IP now we are getting an error here he's saying like my DMA is undeclared that is true because my DMA is declared inside your main okay so you cannot directly use it in this function now one way to avoid it is like our interrupt controller you can declare this also as a global variable this one and you can directly access it but the proper way of doing it is <clears throat> as I mentioned before when you make your interrupt service routine it can actually take one parameter and that parameter will be a pointer to the hardware which is giving interrupt so in our case uh, the interrupt is not given by DMA controller here it is given by our IP but still we can pass a pointer to the DMA controller so that we can access it within our ISR okay so it should be a pointer so let's call it like usually we call it the callback callback because if you if you look at this function let's keep connect okay this last one void star callback reference you can use whatever name you want but the type should be a pointer to void and here here when you are linking an ISR with a particular IRQ you can pass the pointer also so let me say like ampersand uh, my DMA it should be the pointer to the hardware but let's typecast it to void, void star so what happens is whenever the ISR is called interrupt service routine is called this pointer will be automatically passed to the ISR you don't have to explicitly do it okay so the pointer to the DMA controller it will automatically come to this interrupt service routine so this is actually representing the pointer to the DMA controller okay so instead of ampersand my DMA what you can do is he is expecting a pointer to the DMA controller. So let's again typecast X DMA star and this will be the pointer to the DMA controller. So once you do like this, that error will go away. Okay. So this last parameter is a pointer to you can actually pass any pointer, but usually we pass the pointer to the device which generates the interrupt and uh, that pointer will be automatically passed to the interrupt service routine whenever the interrupt service routine is invoked so based on that that comes here and everything works fine that's it so whenever you get an interrupt you are sending a new line now let's write the next interrupt service routine so there also let's pass this pointer and uh, there also let me pass this pointer to my DMA controller because we might need it there also and let's write this one okay so what is happening here so this interrupt will come when the DMA controller says he has received all the configured data from my IP, which is basically indicating that the image processing operation is over. That's it. Okay, so that's how I find out my image processing is over. So what I should do once I finish image processing, I want to see the image output, okay? so to send back the image to our computer we will again use the ur control 
okay so what i'm going to do is here i will simply make some signal called done equal to one and uh, my main he will be simply waiting for this done while done is zero he is just waiting so i need done at both places so we have to declare it as a global variable int done and once i find like he has done i can send the image back to my computer through the uart okay for that i am going to reuse the code from our image inversion so we have the same thing we need these two this much okay and we need to okay initialize you usually we initialize the you what first okay we don't want mlf we want this one look up config config initialize set port rate okay we need this much and once we finish processing okay so we can transmit it back to my computer so here okay so we are not sending file size we are sending only the image part so let's say hash define image size is 512 times 512 so let's say image size my UART okay where is our data starting here also it is starting from image data okay so image data of total transmitted byte I hope you remember what this was basically doing this delay was avoiding for avoiding data loss okay so let's keep one microsecond and we have to use sleep dot h it's already added And we need to add the header file for UART. So we have this one, XURPS. My UART. okay so that part looks fine <coughs> while not done while close does not guard okay this is fine or you can write like this okay now the last thing left is disabling and enabling interrupt for for this isr that also we should do ideally Okay, so you can do it same way, or you can use the functions available in the PMA controller driver also. Okay, so here we are disabling the interrupt through the interrupt controller because we don't have any special register inside our IP to disable interrupt. We have to directly do it through the interrupt controller. But uh, DMA it has a register inside through which you can enable or disable interrupt which we actually used at the beginning if you remember where this not this one this one so same way instead of enable we can have disable also and after that we can enable also again as mentioned before this we have to change to our callback reference
okay now in addition to disabling the spelling is wrong int yeah disable Okay, so in addition to disabling, we need to do one more thing. Again, this is uh, IP dependent. Okay, so some IPs, uh, most cases actually you have to. Again, remember in our previous IP also we had to do it because interrupts they are usually coming from the status register. So if you want to get interrupt next time, you need to clear that status register. Otherwise, it remains one and uh, the new interrupt won't be coming. We remember we are edge triggered interrupt. So if the status register remains one, the interrupt line is always one. So next time also when status register one, we won't be able to detect it. So because it need to go to zero and become one if you want to detect the edge. Okay. So we have to clear that interrupt bit once so that it becomes one again next time. For that again here we have a built-in function called the interrupt acknowledge okay so think intr act function yes this one and we need to call that function to acknowledge the intro to clear the intro in the in the register so again it takes the following parameters instance pointer mask direction same parameters so we can use the same parameters instance pointer mask and direction but anyway this interrupt will come only once because uh, for a given point given test we are we are testing the processing only once so once he finishes image processing, we get the intro. Only when we run it next time, uh, the entire software, we may get it next time. So, okay, so that's it. So it covers many things that we have learned before in this single example. So we will now test it on hardware. Just go to run configuration, this one, and uh, standalone application and check these options and run it once so that the clock from ps starts to go to pl but before you actually run we need to program the fpga from v okay so after that we come to application and enable this and uh, run it my board is powered off, that's why the error came. So I'll power it on and program from v -word. My board is powered on. Let's configure Taratum serial port 115200 new setting and log. Let's call it uh, blood.bmp and it will be a binary file so we need to remove any print statement that will be coming other than the error ones so this 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 are fine okay we don't have any print other than error one fine now go to vivado and program the device we have the debug core also, so if you are interested, you can see the signals also during runtime. Okay, so let's try to run. Okay, run. And you can see actually the data is coming. The entire processing is over actually. Okay, so all of these happen and he is sending back the process data to my computer through UART, which may take some time.
Okay, so data transfer is finished. Two bytes are missing. No big deal. So let's check it. Okay, so remember we are sending only the only the image part. Okay, we didn't send the header part. So even if it is called uh, a BMP image, Windows won't be able to open it because there is no header. So what we can do is we can just open it and uh, take our original nana and just copy paste the header part so that we can see the output first 438 hex okay only did this okay 37 and now it is the blur.bmp okay so it's exactly same as our simulation you might also notice the same extra rows and two extra columns at the top and the right okay so i hope uh, you got an idea about overall image filtering so i will have one more tutorial where we will have another kernel may be the one for doing edge detection which may be more interesting than the blur operation okay thank you